With more than 20,000 restaurants in New York City, it could take over 18 years of eating out three times a day to try them all. Oh, really? That's a task. That is a task. <laughs> but our next guest has done the hard work for you. Here to reveal some hidden gems for the perfect places in the city is TV personality and gorgeous girl, foodie Aww. Kelly Choi. Thank you, hey, guys. Kelly, you don't Kelly. eat. It looks like I don't. You I don't know, eat. I weigh all of 20 pounds. Yeah. But see, <laughs> the thing is, when you eat a lot of foods, you get really picky. Okay. And then you only want what you really want. That's kind of the key, I think, That's too, okay. eating well. That's well, you've been eating point. great, and we've seen you on shows like Judging Iron Chef America and hosting Top Chef Masters, but you're not a cook, so how did you get into this TV food business? I think, you know, growing up, I was always really into food. Mm. Um, my dad especially was very opinionated. Like, my mom and I would spend Sundays cooking, and he would always have something to say, usually kind of like a critique, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but also, um, my parents and I, I mean, I worked in it in the summers. They had a grocery store. Okay. So I would work in the cashier, and then sometimes in the summer I would go in the back and actually even work at the, the butcher area and, like, slice meat. And so I literally had every processed food, like every regular grocery item eat, gr eating growing up that was ever invented. Like, you know, every chip, every everything, every, <laughs> every TV cheetah, dinner, every everything. TV dinner. Yes, Intimate okay. relationship with all that stuff. <laughs> Why do you think culinary shows have become so popular over the years? You know, I think it's food, shelter, clothing, right? It's something that it's a necessity. Mm. It's something that's very comforting, especially when times are kind of tough, when the economy's not doing so great. And everybody has an opinion. Everybody has their favorites. That's I can't right. wait to find out about you guys' favorites after this. This, but uh -oh. and it's really entertaining like who doesn't like to see like a visceral I don't know like a fire a grill or like the barbecue mm -hmm. guy in the summertime like grilling meats and stuff it's it's kind of sexy it's, true. it's really satisfying and visually it's really stimulating it's true. I think that's why now you mentioned growing over growing up around lots of food but yeah. were you always a foodie and you know always critiquing like your dad was and when did you decide I can make a career out of doing this I guess I kind of was like because we did have that grocery store I would when I was little go to the grocery store and like pick a can of green beans or like what I thought at the time were mashed potatoes. Now see, growing up I ate a lot of Korean food because I was born in Korea and my parents okay. of course were Korean. Yeah. But I would try to do like an American meal and I would open the green beans, warm it up and I would serve this dinner, like American style, you know, Western style on a plate. And my parents would be like, no, that we don't, we don't want to eat that. that. We want <laughs> rice and our sides and the regular Korean food suspects. So. Um, it, it was something that I just always kind of was really into and wanted to pretend like I was cooking. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I first came to New York, I wanted to go to culinary school, but at the time, you know, I was a student and I really couldn't afford it, so. It's but it's great because everyone in New York has their own opinions and you can really glean a lot from watching TV shows, at least get ideas, mm -hmm. and I do love to cook now, so. Okay. Well, talk to us about your TV show. How does it work exactly? You find these hidden gems around the city? Well, I do a couple of shows. One's mm -hmm. called Secrets of New York, yes. and that's totally irrelevant to food. Okay. It's basically about, let's say, skyscrapers or underground. Um, I just shot a new series of episodes where one was on the kind of the birthplace of pop music in New York. Oh, so nice. So that's one thing. And then I do a restaurant show where I do get to pick all the places that I feature. So if I like the, the fried chicken at this place, I'll kind of feature it and go back with a chef and cook it in the kitchen. So I get to learn all the secrets mm -hmm. of how they do it really well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So share with us where you've been lately. I see here that since breakfast is the most important meal of the day, where's the best place in the city to get some eggs? It's actually a place that I shot um, recently. It's an Indian place. And I think a lot of Indian restaurants in New York, they're kind of focused on northern Indian. You know, India is a big country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's I think massive. a lot of people have an idea of it's, you know, it's chicken tikka masala, it's heavy cream and butter. But because the country is so big, there's so many different regions, right? Just like the U.S. Mm -hmm. And this place focuses more on sort of the south part of India. And there's an off the menu item that I discovered when I was shooting Ooh. there the other day. It's called Kokum is the place of the restaurant, the Kokum. name of the restaurant, yeah. Okay. Kokum is actually like a dried fruit. It's kind of like a dried prune in a way. Okay. And so they use this ingredient in a lot of their foods. And there's this dish called the egg appam. And appam is basically like a coconut milk and rice crepe. So it's kind of like in the shape of like an egg, sort of. Mm. So the chef will crack an egg and poach it in there. And I love anything where you can like sort of crack a poached egg and just like cream it all up and eat it mm, in a spoon, you know? Yeah. So if you go there and you ask for it, it's not on the menu, but it's something that uh, you can tell them that I asked you to all have right. her. The Kelly it's special. Good to know good people in high <laughs> <Yeah>. places. <laughs> now, you mentioned Korean food earlier, and it's become all the rage, especially in New York City. Yeah. So where is one authentic spot we could try? Well, there are 
there's one street in particular in Manhattan on 32nd, which is pretty close by our studios mm -hmm. here. Um, if, I think when it comes to ethnic cuisine, sometimes if you're not that familiar with it, you're intimidated by it, right? And sometimes, like I know, I'll go to, say, a certain restaurant and maybe they don't speak English as well. So that alone can be kind of intimidating. I think if you go to a place on 32nd Street, it's a fun spot called Food Gallery 32. Food Gallery? Oh, I've seen yeah. that. Yeah, and it's kind yeah. of like a food market where you yeah. can try a bunch of different things all at once. Um, will it be the best of what you're getting there? Not necessarily, but you can try lots of different things. Um, there's no no sort of commitment because you're not going to get a waiter or waitress come by you. You're just going to look around. You can take a look and browse all the yeah. little food stalls, order up a bunch of things because that's really what it's for, okay. and go with a bunch of friends and just try a bunch of different things there. That's, that's a great idea. That sounds I knew fun. The, yeah, too. and I knew the Korean was getting really big when I went to like a Whole Foods and saw kimchi mm -hmm. on the buffet. I never wow. really thought I would Very see something popular. like that. Growing up, because you know when you're, especially when your parents are foreign. Yeah. My parents are from Nigeria, so you think your food is just so. It's like weird. It's I was like weird and strange. A exactly. And that's a very pungent smell. It's a side dish. And she's pretty strong. Yeah, that's in every sort of side dish preparation. It's like in every meal. But I, now I just ethnic definitely... cuisine has gone very mainstream yeah. across the board. Definitely. Indian, Korean, Ethiopian, Nigerian. Mm -hmm. It's become very popular. I mean, it's definitely. a kind of a phrase or I guess a word that a lot of chefs these days don't like, fusion. Mm. But food is food. Like, you know, sauerkraut in Germany is the Korean version of kimchi. Like, every culture has their version of the bread or the rice or whatever it is that they eat. It's just presented in a slightly different way, you know. Okay. Well, there's one restaurant presenting fish in a different way as well, right? <laughs> I feel like in New York, you know, everyone has a favorite bagel spot they or do. their like mm -hmm. sandwich spot. I love a good tuna fish sandwich, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it is about this place. It's called 72nd Street Bagel. I actually went there this morning, <laughs> but they have this fat-free tuna. They they say it's fat-free. I'm, I'm still a little suspicious about that. <laughs> if it tastes really good, it's, it's not so fat-free. Good, I know. The tuna's uh, fat-free, but all the butter and sugar and everything else they put on top they, to make it nice. Some sort of like I don't know, unmentionable <laughs> something, but it's really creamy. It's delicious. They have mm -hmm. the regular fat-free version right beside the regular one, <laughs> and I've done a direct taste test, and uh -huh. it's. I don't know, maybe slightly more celery in the regular version, but it's huh. so good. And that on a toasted multigrain bagel, really? scooped and toasted with a big old mound of fat free tuna. I've I never had tuna on a bagel before. That's oh my God, I get it all the time. Yeah, okay. you go. You're missing out, my friend. Uh, I'm going to have to try it now. We're okay. going to go after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so if we can't make it to Greece, where can we go to get some good Greek? I love Ooh. this spot in the East Village. There are a lot of great Greek places, especially mm -hmm. in Long Island, um, like in Astoria. It's true, yeah. But in Manhattan, there's this place called Pilos. Pilos. And it's on 7th Street in the East Village. It's very sort of home cooking. Um, it's friendly and unpretentious, yet a little bit more classy than, say, I don't know, if you went to, like, your Greek friend's grandma's house mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are these beautiful terracotta plants that are hanging from the ceiling, and it just feels, you know, when we think of Greece, I've never been to Greece, but I'm thinking Santorini and Mykonos is kind of right. like party and everything's white. You get a touch of that, but you also feel very sort of homey because of these terracotta plants and the, the okay. service is really great. It's just kind of like a... An elegant place that feels homey all at the same time. And they're known for their wines too, right? Their wines are really good. A lot okay. of Greek wines by the glass. You don't have to get a whole bottle and, right. and you know feel like, oh my God, do I have to commit to a whole thing like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> can we talk about gluten-free? Yes, it yes. is something that I think everyone is much more aware of these days. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, Jennifer Esposito opened a bakery that's relatively new. It's called Jennifer's Way. Yeah, it's also she's in been East talking Village. About that yes, a lot. Mm -hmm. and she has celiac disease. That's true. Which is a syndrome, of course, that you really can't have any gluten because mm -hmm. it's like an autoimmune disease. It's you know you can't have the yeah. gluten. But a lot of people these days just want to eat healthier. Mm -hmm. So I think Jennifer's Way is one great option. There's a place called Pip's Place on the Upper East Side. Okay. The owner of this bakery. Her daughter also had celiac disease, so she's offering a lot of gluten-free options. And you'll see that a lot more these days, I think, at restaurants and even when you go to your, your neighborhood market or, like, the grocery store supermarket. And another place I recently shot a bakery. Of course, they all happen to be bakeries and sweets places. Um, <laughs> do you got a sweet tooth? You know, uh -oh. I really don't, but <laughs> I do appreciate a good, you know, when, when you're in the mood for something rich and chocolatey, that's the only thing you can have. Mm, that's true. Do you guys have a sweet tooth? Definitely. You do? Definitely. What's your favorite dessert? 
dessert in general? I would say definitely carrot cake. Oh, I love carrot yeah. cake. Well, this it's place also downfall. has a gluten-free carrot cake, one of the oh, places Oh, don't tell me shop. that! Don't tell me <laughs> that! Demons. Yeah, and Jennifer's Way does a great carrot cake version, too. So. Well, let's keep talking about desserts yes, since please. they're your favorite, Shannon. <laughs> yes. All right, Froyo? Froyo, Froyo is everywhere fro these days, yeah. isn't right. it? I've seen I little trucks. I've seen it in and... Soho. What is, what is Froyo? Froyo, it's frozen yogurt, and there are all these trucks, and there are a lot of, you see 16 handles these days, Mm -hmm. There are a lot of other kind of no-name frozen yogurt spots that are like destination spots where you can go and try a bunch of different mm. samples, by the way. It's a great spot to just try a lot of their flavors. Mm -hmm. But one that I like in particular is in the village. It's called Yogurino. Yogurino. I they like only, that. I know. It's, it's from Italy. They only uh -huh. have one flavor, though. Like when you go to all oh. these frozen yogurt spots, they have like 16, of I don't course. know, many countless. Yeah. But the regular frozen yogurt at this place on Bleecker Street is just plain, and it's the best. It is perfectly tangy. There's not a whole lot of calories and fats, so you don't feel as guilty as mm. you would, say, having a regular full-on carrot cake or something yes. like that. <laughs> and the toppings are really great. I mean, it's all about the toppings at this place because it's just one flavor, so okay. well, it's really you, tasty. If someone's looking for uh, more flavors, you have a unique place that also does interesting flavors of ice cream. Yes. It's this great place called Odd Fellows. It's in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Okay. Odd Fellows. Yes. Okay. And it has odd, very interesting, titillating flavors. Um, the Chef Sam Mason, he was on Top Chef. Mm -hmm. And um, they're doing flavors like, I mean, you check their website daily because it changes all the time. It's very seasonal. Nice. But they do things like chorizo caramel, they do buttermilk biscuit, they'll really? do uh, Guinness wow. and stout, and um, all these different unique flavors. Like, depending on the season, it'll be very seasonal to that. You can do strawberry shortcake, I've seen, mm. to just lots of really unique flavors that are all artisanal. Small, small batches, so you don't have to, they're not making a whole bunch at once, so you know that it's fresh. And it's just really unique flavors that are really different in New York. Uh, well, we're talking about all these things that are going to be very heavy on the belly for calories, but <laughs> what if we want to still have a little sweet tooth, but do it in a healthy way? What do you recommend? You know, one place that I also see popping up a lot in New York is juice places. Mm -hmm. Juice spots are everywhere, and I love juices, but what's kind of, um, I guess, not as well known is if you haven't gone into a juice spot, they have really great desserts there, too. Is that mm -hmm. right? And some of these places have raw desserts, which is basically oh, stuff true. that hasn't been heated, mm -hmm. but they'll do like a, they'll call it a cheesecake, of course, there's no cheese in it, because but it's made raw. with cashews or something Cashew else. Cashew nuts mm -hmm. and coconuts, and I love anything coconut. Mm -hmm. And the flavors are really, I think, pristine and true. Mm -hmm. And some of these juice spots, after, say, 5 o'clock, you get it for, like, half price. Really? So check it out. Go in there I for these. Talking. I guess it know. definitely will make you feel better having mm. a, a raw, you know, juice spot inspired dessert too. And lastly, if you're over Starbucks, where can we go for some good coffee? You know, there are so not many that great... you could ever be over Starbucks. Right. I know. Never. Never. And, and Starbucks <laughs> works in a pinch. I always go there too. But I love this place called Blue Bottle Coffee. It's from the West Coast. You'll see a lot of coffee spots opening up from the West Coast in New York now. Um, and uh, they're kind of hard to find, but all they do is coffee, so you know that. They're really concentrating on the flavor of that. Mm -hmm. This is one of those places where I don't doctor it. I don't put, you know, half and half or sugar or really? anything and just have it. And the fruitiness of the fruit, because coffee is a fruit, mm -hmm. so you can really taste the aromas of that and you can smell it and do cuppings and all things like that. And it's a delicious brew. Wow, we have a lot more places to Kelly, try we now. We're going out right now. <laughs> we are going out with you. <laughs> deal. After the show. Snag me one of those coasts and we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> but before we go out, though, I'm really hungry now. So when we come back, we're going to talk about doing Thanksgiving dinner with the twins. Oh, I've got to stay for that. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> and you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.